English Language Academy. Practice makes perfect. Listen and practice. My name is Jimmy, and my biggest weakness is being lazy. I just lie around the house all day and don't get anything done. I will try to set at least three realistic goals every day to help get motivated. Listen and practice. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Today, I want to talk about a very interesting wedding tradition in America. It is common in many other Western cultures too. The tradition is that every bride is supposed to wear something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue on her wedding day. The saying comes from an old English nursery rhyme. Something old helps the bride remember her family history. It is often a piece of jewelry from the bride's grandmother. Something new is a symbol of the couple's new life. It is usually the bride's shoes, but it could be anything. Something borrowed represents the importance of friends in a marriage. It can be anything given to the bride. By her closest married friend. Finally, something blue is worn because the color blue symbolizes purity and loyalty. It can be anything from a piece of clothing to a flower. This tradition has been around for many years and is still very common. Listen and practice. Ice hockey is one of the most popular winter sports. It is very popular in cold weather countries like Canada, Russia, and the Czech Republic. In those countries, kids play ice hockey on frozen ponds and rivers. Things you need to play ice hockey are hockey skates, a hockey stick, and a puck. Ice hockey is a great winter sport. Listen and practice. Iqbal Masih was born in Pakistan in 1983. His family was very poor. When he was four, they could not repay a debt, so they sold him instead. Iqbal had to work in a carpet shop. That's all he did, 14 hours a day, six days a week. One day, Iqbal learned this was illegal. He decided to escape, but the local police caught him and brought him back. It was illegal, but the shop owner paid the police, and they ignored the law. Iqbal tried again and again. Finally, he succeeded. And then helped other children do the same. He saved over three thousand children this way. He began traveling around the world. He taught adults about the problem of child slavery. Tragically, Iqbal was shot and killed in 1995. The crime remains a mystery, but Iqbal's fight still goes on. Listen and practice. In 1968, Lena Maria Klingvall was born. She was a healthy Swedish baby with a beautiful smile, but she was a little different. Lena had no arms, 
and her one leg was much smaller than the other. This did not stop Lena. She learned to use her feet like hands. She learned to swim, too. She was good at it. In 1988, she went to the Paralympics in Seoul. She got fourth place. After that, Lena studied music in college. Then she began singing as a pro. She became popular at home and in Korea, Japan, and Thailand. Today, Lena is also an artist. She uses her feet to paint. Lena gives lectures about her challenges. She is also the subject of a movie. Lena is a good role model. She gives hope to many people. Listen and practice. Your body is an amazing machine. How does it work? Bones and muscles work together, like an arrow and a bow. Bones hold your body up. They're hard and don't bend like an arrow. Muscles make your body move and keep your balance. Muscles bend and stretch. Then they return to their old shape like a bow. Imagine a stretchy arrow and a bow that can't bend. That won't work. If you have no bones and muscles, what happens? Without bones, you fall down. You're like a jellyfish. Without muscles, you're a bag of bones. You can't balance. You're like a tree with no roots. The wind tips you over and you can't get up. Trees don't have things like muscles, so they can't move. Jellyfish have no bones, so they can't stand up. Listen and practice. The Sahara Desert is the hottest place in the world. It is in northern Africa and covers 11 countries. It is really hot there because it's near the equator. The desert is the same size as the United States. Only a few animals live there, like camels, goats, and vipers. And only a few plants can live there, like cactuses and olive trees. Not many people live there either because there isn't enough water. There are even huge sand dunes as high as 180 meters. The average temperature in the Sahara Desert is over 30 degrees, but it can be as high as 50 degrees during the hot period. Listen and practice. Wind energy. Wind is moving air. To catch wind energy, people build wind turbines in windy places like high hills or near beaches. Wind turbines are tall and they have three or four blades at the top. The blades turn like a propeller when the wind blows on them. The blades then turn a generator inside the wind turbine to create electricity. When many wind turbines are built together to make a lot of electricity, this is called a wind farm. Winds are stronger when they are higher in the sky, so scientists are inventing wind energy machines that look like kites. They send electricity to Earth through long cables. Listen and practice. Energy from water. People can use the kinetic energy of moving water to make electricity. For example, water that moves down mountains moves very quickly, and so it has a lot of kinetic energy. 
In a hydroelectric power station, this water moves quickly into pipes, which push it through turbines. The water turns turbines that turn generators to make electricity. Some hydroelectric power stations are next to rivers. A large wall called a dam holds the water so it becomes a store of potential energy. When the water stored behind a dam is pushed through pipes and turbines, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy that can be used to make electricity. The Hoover Dam is one of the biggest hydroelectric power stations in the USA. It makes electricity for about 1.3 million people. Listen and practice. We can all help to save energy. We can use fewer fossil fuels every day by changing some of the things that we do. For example, we can save oil by walking, riding bicycles, sharing rides to school, or traveling by bus instead of making all our journeys by car. This will also reduce the amount of air pollution and greenhouse gases that go into the air. We can use less electricity by turning off lights and electric machines when we aren't using them. In the future, there will be more people on Earth, and we will need more electricity and more energy for our vehicles. What will you do to help to save energy for the future? Listen and practice. Are you worried about what to buy your kid for his or her birthday? Then come over to Charlie's Sports Shop. We have all kinds of fun sports equipment, motorized scooters, bocking stilts, and luge boards, to name a few. If your kid loves exercising, I suggest bocking stilts. Bocking stilts are spring-loaded shoes that make you jump high like a kangaroo. If your kid is an adventurer, a luge board will do. A luge board is a type of high-speed skateboard you lie down on. If your kid is busy and has to get around to places fast, a motorized scooter would be a perfect present. They are gas-powered scooters that go really fast. Just remember, all these sports are a little risky. So don't forget to buy your kid a helmet too. Listen and practice. Look in your refrigerator. Where did all the food come from? Of course, it came from a farm or the ocean. You picked it up in the supermarket, but where was the farm, and which ocean? Most people don't know, but they should because their choices affect global warming. It's all about the distance your food travels. Transporting food burns fuel. The longer the distance, the more fuel it takes. Of course, burning fuel adds CO2 to the atmosphere. The CO2 traps heat from the sun, and that raises the Earth's temperatures. Scientists agree that this will cause environmental problems. Imported food uses the most fuel. Most of it travels by ship or airplane. Even food from your own country has to travel in trucks. The farther away it starts, the more fuel it uses. That's why many people look for locally grown food. Buying local food saves fuel. Also, it's fresher. Listen and practice. 
Hello, I'm your heart. You know what I do? I pump blood around the body. But how? Look inside. Here I am, inside the rib cage. I'm right between your lungs. That's important because the blood has two main jobs. One is taking oxygen to the rest of the body. The other is bringing carbon dioxide back. The lungs breathe in oxygen, and they breathe out carbon dioxide. Some blood comes from the lungs to me. That blood has oxygen in it. Some blood goes from me to the lungs. That has carbon dioxide, and the lungs get rid of it. Can you see the arteries and veins? Both are tubes that blood travels through. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood back to the heart. I keep it all moving smoothly. Listen and practice. According to a survey conducted in over 20 countries, the most serious type of pollution in the world is now water pollution. Water pollution is a major cause of death worldwide, and at present, around 500 million people in the world do not have access to clean drinking water. So how can you help? There are many ways to help prevent it. One way is to reduce water use. We can do this by taking shorter showers. Second, throw away dangerous chemicals properly. That means do not put paint or car oil in the trash. Third, only buy from companies that have good environmental records. If polluting companies can't make money, they will have to change their ways. Listen and practice. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is James Richardson, and I am from the Olympics Committee. The topic of my speech today is the differences between the Summer and Winter Olympics. I want to start by saying there are two kinds of Olympic Games. Summer Olympic Games and Winter Olympic Games. First, I will talk about the Summer Olympic Games. The Summer Games are bigger than the Winter Games. In the Summer Games, over 200 countries compete. Also, there are more than 40 different kinds of sporting events. But the Winter Olympic Games are much smaller than the Summer Games. In the Winter Games, just around 80 countries compete, and there are only 15 sports. While they are different, both the Summer and Winter Games are very popular worldwide. Listen and practice. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly, and this is my pet dog, Mickey. He has silky white hair and droopy ears. I feed him dog food, but sometimes when he behaves or does something good, I give him tasty treats like sausages and steak. He is really special. Mickey brings the newspaper every morning and barks when strangers come by the door. I love Mickey. He is the only one who can comfort me when I feel gloomy. When I cry, he comes and licks the tears off my face. No ordinary dogs can do that. Only Mickey.
Isn't he adorable? Listen and practice. What is it like in Antarctica? It is the coldest place in the world, and the temperature there can reach minus 89 degrees. Almost all of the land is covered with snow and ice. Only a few kinds of animals, like penguins and seals, live there. There are no permanent human residents in Antarctica. The only human residents of Antarctica are the few thousand researchers who go there temporarily for research every year. They normally go to Antarctica just during the summer period because the climate during the other seasons is unbearable. Listen and practice. My name is Susie Kim. Today, I am going to give a presentation on my role model. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy my presentation. My role model is my older cousin Veronica. Ever since I was a little girl. I have always admired Veronica. Why? <laughs> to start with, everyone at school knows her and wants to be her friend. That is because she is very friendly and kind. Veronica is also really smart. She gets really good grades and is going to a famous university next year to study engineering. If that wasn't enough, Veronica has the coolest clothes. All my friends say she has the best fashion sense, and of course, Veronica is very pretty. She must be the prettiest girl at our school. I hope when I get older, I can be just like Veronica. It is all I want. In the whole world. Listen and practice. Dinosaurs became extinct millions of years ago. Nobody knows for sure how they became extinct, but we do know a lot about them. Some of them were huge, dangerous reptiles with sharp, deadly teeth, and others were small, gentler species. There were hundreds of dinosaur species that lived in both cold and tropical areas of the world. Although we don't know what made them die off, researchers keep studying their fossils to find out. Listen and practice. Scorpions are one of the most deadly animals on the planet. They live in almost every country in the world. They are cold-blooded and nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and hunt at night. Although they are small. Their sting can cause serious pain. Most scorpions are not deadly to humans, but a few of them are. They kill around two thousand people each year with their venom. Listen and practice. Do you know how you read these words? Your brain tells you 
what your eyes see. Your brain tells you what you see, hear, and touch. It tells your muscles when to move. It helps you to write, speak, draw, and do puzzles. Your brain is amazing. Your brain works all day and at night when you sleep. At night, it makes you breathe, and it makes your heart work. At night, your brain helps you to remember things that you learn in the day. Listen and practice. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alberto Zafra. Today, the topic of my speech will be American superstitions. We don't have enough time to go over all of them, so I will just talk about my favorite three. Number one, Americans say "God bless you" when someone sneezes. They do this because long ago, people thought when a person sneezed, evil spirits could enter his body. Number two, Americans believe if you spill salt on a table, you will have bad luck. Strangely enough, they believe if you throw some salt over your left shoulder after you spill it, you will have good luck again. And finally, number three, Americans believe if you break a mirror, you will have bad luck for seven years. Luckily. They say if you wait seven hours to clean up the broken glass, you will have good luck again. Listen and practice. Many young people around the world become scouts. Scouts is an international organization. For boys and girls aged seven to seventeen, who want to learn about the outdoors, scouts learn outdoor skills, leadership skills, make friends, and have fun. Camping is a very traditional scouting activity. During a camping trip, scouts go hiking and practice the skills they learn during scouting meetings. At night, they often gather around a campfire. To tell ghost stories and sing songs, many scouts say that camping is the best part of being a scout. Listen and practice. When you are hungry, you eat. You put food in your mouth, then you swallow. But Where does the food go after that? The food travels down your throat and into your stomach, where all the interesting stuff happens. In the stomach, food is broken down into all the good things you need to grow big and strong. The stomach is shaped like a small bag. It can hold about one and a half liters of food. That's a lot of food. There are special juices in the stomach that break the food down into really small pieces. A person eats about four hundred and fifty kilograms of food each year. Imagine how busy a stomach is each day. That's why we have stomach aches sometimes. Too much food or the wrong kinds of food can make our stomachs hurt. Now you know what happens to the food you eat. Listen and practice. Bobby is a curious boy. One day, he saw a picture in a magazine. 
The picture showed a woman lying in a chair. She had two thin slices of cucumber on her eyes. It must be good for my eyes, he thought. That afternoon, Bobby cut two slices of cucumber. He laid on his back and carefully placed the cucumber on his eyes, just like the magazine photo. He felt so relaxed that he fell asleep. When Bobby's mother came home, the house was quiet. She wondered where Bobby was. Maybe he is sick, she thought. She went up to Bobby's room and found him sleeping with his two huge cucumber eyes. Ah! She gasped in surprise. But when she found out what Bobby was doing, she laughed. What a curious little boy! Listen and practice. Rico's mother tells him a story about a big bird. This bird has long legs and a long neck. What is it? It is an ostrich. When ostriches are frightened, they hide their heads in the sand. They think that if they cannot see danger, nothing bad will happen. One day, an ostrich was being chased by a wolf. It was really scared. So, it hid its head in the sand. The bird assumed that if he couldn't see the wolf, then the wolf couldn't see him either. But the wolf saw the rest of the ostrich, and he quickly ate the bird. Rico laughed. What a dumb bird! Rico's mother said, Yes, pretending danger doesn't exist does not make it so. Listen and practice. I ran inside feeling really excited and nervous. That's when Dad explained it all to me. This happens every 18 years. That's why I had never seen it before. I'm only 10. So why did it look so big and bright? Well, the moon is normally 253,000 miles away from the Earth. But on this day, it was 31,000 miles closer to us. Don't worry, it's natural and normal. It will happen again in 18 years. How old will I be then? Wow, I will be 28 years old. But I won't be scared when I see it next time. When you understand why things happen, you are not afraid of them anymore. Keep your eyes open and you will be able to see the big moon too. Listen and practice. Our teacher, Mr. White, has two sons. Both of them are deaf. They can't speak either. When the first boy was born, they found that he could not hear sounds. In great shock, Mr. White and his wife went to many different hospitals to see treatment. After three years, their son still could not hear sounds. They accepted the fact that their son would never hear anything. His world would be silent. A few years later, their second son was born. Like their first child, this son was deaf too. After talking to experts, they learned that the reason why their children were born deaf was defective genes. 
Even so, Mr. White loves his sons very much. Every day he sends them to a special school. The two boys are very smart. Mr. White uses sign language to talk to his sons. He taught us some sign language, too. Listen and practice. Believe it or not, you can greatly improve your health in 10 very simple ways. 1. Eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy for the morning. 2. Go for a walk. Walking is good exercise, and exercise is necessary for good health. 3. Floss your teeth. Don't just brush them. Flossing keeps your gums healthy. 4. Drink eight glasses of water every day. Water helps your body in many ways. Five, stretch for five minutes. Stretching is important for your muscles. Six, get enough calcium. Your bones need it. Dairy foods like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. Seven, do something to challenge your brain. For example, do a crossword puzzle or read a new book. Eight, take a time out, a break of about 20 minutes. Do something different. For example, get up and walk or sit down and listen to music. Nine, wear a seatbelt. Every year, seatbelts save thousands of lives. Ten, protect your skin. Use lots of moisturizer and sunscreen. Listen and practice. The topic of my lecture today is the differences between ancient and modern buildings. First, I want to talk about ancient buildings. This is a very interesting subject for me because I studied ancient history in university. Ancient buildings were normally built of stone, and they took many years to complete. They were also much smaller than modern buildings. The tallest building of the ancient world was the Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. It was 146 meters tall. But now let's look at modern buildings. They are a lot different from the buildings of the ancient world. They are normally built of steel and concrete, and they only take a few years to complete. They are also much bigger than ancient buildings. The tallest building of the modern world is the Burj Khalifa in the United Arab Emirates. It is 818 meters tall. Listen and practice. On a hot summer day, Jim and Jill decided to sell lemon ice. But first, they had to make it. They poured lemonade into small paper cups and put the cups in the freezer. Let's set up a table while we wait for it to freeze, said Jim. Great idea, said Jill. Soon they had set up a table with a yellow tablecloth by the road. Jill went to the freezer but came back empty-handed. It's not frozen yet, she said. Let's make a sign while we wait for it to freeze, said Jim. Great idea, said Jill. They made a big yellow sign, Lemon Ice for Sale. Soon, a crowd of kids formed in front of the table. Jim and Jill went to get the lemon ice. It's still not frozen, 
It's just cold, said Jim. What will we sell to all those kids? Lemonade, exclaimed Jill. Ice cold lemonade. Soon, Jim and Jill sold out of lemonade and started another batch. Listen and practice. My name is Ken, and I had a great Earth Day. My class went to the California National Forest. A park ranger showed us a lot of interesting things. We looked for spiders, ants, and beetles. We also talked about how to protect plants and animals by not littering, conserving water, and using environmentally friendly products. At the end of the day, everyone got to take home a baby tree. I'm going to plant mine in front of my apartment. Listen and practice. Adam is not going to school today. He is spending the day with his dad. That's right. It's take your child to work day. Adam will be going to the fire station to watch how his dad works. Adam's dad is a firefighter. Today, Adam wants to see the big red fire trucks. He wants to see the black and white dog that lives at the fire station. He wants to see the big ladders. He wants to see everything. Yes. Adam is very happy. He and his dad get up early this morning. They take the bus to the fire station. Many parents will be bringing their kids to work today. The fire chief shows the kids around the station. It is very exciting. Adam has one wish. He wants to sit in the fire truck. He says, "Please, chief, may I sit in the big red fire truck?" Adam climbs into the big seat. He feels the wheel. He sees many buttons. His dad presses a button. Wow! The fire siren makes a big sound. What a fun day! Listen and practice. Everyone needs food to live. It gives you energy to work and play. It also gives you nutrients to grow well and stay healthy. Do you eat a balanced diet with lots of different nutrients? Your body needs proteins to build muscles. Proteins are also important for healthy hair and fingernails. You can get lots of proteins from meat, fish, and eggs. Dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt also contain proteins. Many people don't eat animal products, but they can get proteins from plant products. Pulses like beans and lentils are rich in proteins. Many grains, nuts, and seeds have proteins too. Which of these foods do you eat? Listen and practice. The next time you brush your teeth, take a closer look at your toothbrush. It's simple. It's easy to use. In fact, it's perfect for removing the dirt on and between your teeth. Before toothbrushes, people chewed on soft sticks. They even used feathers to pick their teeth after a good meal. Today, 
nearly everyone brushes their teeth with a toothbrush. The Chinese invented the toothbrush about 600 years ago. They used hairs from the Siberian wild pig to make the brush. Bamboo or bone was used for the handle. European travelers brought toothbrushes back from China, but they did not like the feel of the pig hairs, so they used horse or cow hairs instead. In modern times, most toothbrushes are made of nylon, but the purpose is the same, to keep your teeth clean. That way, you will grow up with strong, healthy teeth. Listen and practice. You have skin everywhere on your body. Your skin helps you to touch things. It helps you to know when things are hot or cold. Skin stops dirt getting into your body. It stops water getting into your body when it's rainy and when you swim. Hair grows out of your skin. Hair on your arms and legs stands up when you're cold. This stops your body getting too cold. Your skin makes sweat when you're hot. This stops your body getting too hot. Protect your body. Wash every day so you can get dirt and sweat off your skin and hair. Listen and practice. There are bones under your skin. These bones make your skeleton. Your skeleton helps you to stand up. There are joints in your skeleton too. Bones meet at joints. Elbows and knees are joints. Joints help you to move. Knee joints help you to jump and kick. A baby has small bones. Bones grow and they make you big and tall. Your bones stop growing when you are about 20 years old. Then there are 206 bones in your body. Protect your bones. When you ride a skateboard, wear pads to protect your bones and joints. Wear a helmet to protect your head, too. Listen and practice. Last summer, I went on a week-long bus tour of Europe. On the first day, 20 people showed up. They were all of different backgrounds and cultures. At first, no one talked to each other. But gradually, people got to know each other better. Then, they started to eat together, like real friends. But one old man still didn't talk much. He just listened. He seemed to be a man of few words. Then, one day, as we were eating lunch, he opened his mouth. Slowly, he said, Let's not waste any food. Let's all think about the farmers. Some young people gave him a strange look. 
but he won my respect immediately. He was right. Think about how much work it takes to grow rice and to make the meals on our tables. Since that day, I often think of that old man and his wise words while I am eating. Listen and practice. Have you ever heard the story of Robin Hood? He is a fictional character who steals money from the rich and gives it to the poor. In the United States in the 1930s, there was something called the Great Depression. During that time, a lot of people lost their jobs and people stopped spending money. Because of this, many banks closed and did not give people back the money they had put in the bank. A lot of people were mad at the banks, and some of them turned to crime. John Dillinger was one of those people. He and his gang went around the United States robbing banks. They stole over $300,000. Some people considered Dillinger to be a modern-day Robin Hood. They said the banks stole from ordinary people, so they were happy to see an ordinary person steal from banks. Eventually, Dillinger was caught and killed by police. And while some people considered Dillinger to be a hero, to the police and the banks he stole from, he was a very bad villain. Listen and practice. Today, I walk to school. As a matter of fact, everyone in my school walked to school. Why? Today is a special day. We call it Nature Friendly Day. What does that mean? Well, it means that for one whole day, we do something special for nature. Cars are one of the biggest causes of air pollution. They burn fuel so they can run. But as the fuel burns, it creates a harmful gas. It makes our air dirty and unhealthy. If we want to be nature-friendly, we need to think about new ways to get around. So, on this special day, we all decided to walk to school. And you know what? Walking to school wasn't that bad. We got some exercise, breathed in some fresh air, and saw things differently than when we were in a car. Listen and practice. Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Desmond. I write children's stories and fairy tales. The lecture I am going to give today is on animal symbols in fairy tales. Fairy tale writers often use animals as symbols to help tell their story. Three of the most common animal symbols we find in fairy tales are eagles, fish, and snakes. First, I want to talk about the eagle. Eagles are used in many fairy tales as a symbol of change. So if you see an eagle, expect a big change to happen soon. Next, let's look at the fish. Fish are often used in stories to show personal transformation. So if the main character sees a fish, his behavior will probably change for the better. Finally, let's examine the snake. Snakes are used very frequently to show that something bad is about to happen. If you see a snake appear in your next story, prepare for the worst. Listen and practice.
Some scientists believe that the dinosaurs were killed by a massive meteor that hit the Earth millions of years ago. there was a bright flash of light in the sky. Last night, we went outside to watch the night sky. Wow! Every minute, there was a bright flash of light in the sky. Sometimes, the light had a really long tail. I felt like I was watching a fireworks show, only it was made by nature. What were we seeing? Meteors. We sometimes call meteors shooting stars. But they are not stars. They are pieces of dirt and rock from outer space. Some are the size of a small grain of sand. But they make a big show when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. Some scientists believe that the dinosaurs were killed by a massive meteor that hit the Earth millions of years ago. English Language Academy. Practice makes perfect. Listen and practice. What helps your bones and joints to walk, run, dance and jump? Muscles. Muscles pull your bones to move your body. Muscles in your legs help you to ride a bicycle. Muscles in your arms help you to row a boat. There are more than 600 muscles in your body. Running, swimming, dancing and riding a bicycle are types of exercise. Exercise makes your muscles, bones and joints strong. Your heart is a type of muscle. Exercise makes your heart strong too. Protect your body. Do exercise every day. What is your favourite type of exercise? Listen and practice. This past summer, I went to my grandpa's house in the countryside. There were no televisions or computer games. Instead, I spent time with kids in the neighborhood, picking wild berries and catching grasshoppers in the fields. The nights were the best part of my trip. We lay on the grass and watched the stars in the sky. It was nothing like the sky in the city. It was completely dark. You could not even see your own fingers. The stars were so bright and clear, and there were so many of them. For the first time, I saw the Big Dipper. I even saw the Milky Way. All the kids shared what we knew about the stars and picked out shapes with our imaginations. I was fascinated by the wonder of the night sky. It was so different from anything I had seen in the city. Listen and practice.
Your eyes help you to see the world around you. They open and close many times every day. This is called blinking. When your eyes blink, they wash dirt out of your eyes. At night, your eyes close so you can sleep. Eyes blink about 15 times every minute. Your ears help you to listen to music. They help you to listen for cars in the street. Your ears can hear things when you sleep, too. Protect your eyes and ears. On sunny days, wear sunglasses to protect your eyes. Don't listen to very loud music. It's bad for your ears. Listen and practice. One day, my dad and I went to the fair. We heard some strange music coming from a little tent. There was a sign on the tent. Dr. Tomorrow will tell your future. I had just heard a story about a man who was famous for predicting the future. I was curious, so we went inside. An old man was sitting in a dark corner. He looked at my father's hands and talked about my father's past. About half of the things he said were true. This amazed both my father and me, for some of the things would have been hard to guess. Dr. Tomorrow offered to tell my father's future, but my dad said, No thanks, the future comes fast enough. We thanked the man. And walked out. We both wondered if a person could really know the future. I still do not know the answer to that question. Listen and practice. Wow! Something strange happened last night. It scared me at first. Lucky for me, my dad was home. What was it? A big moon, and I mean big, really big. It was the biggest moon I had ever seen. I saw it outside our house on the farm. It was rising from the end of the field. Normally, when the moon is full, it looks pretty big. But the moon last night was something I had never seen before. As it rose, it seemed to take up the whole sky. It was very bright. It was a weird orange color. And, scariest of all, it lit up the night sky as if someone had turned on a big light. Listen and practice. Today, we are going to learn about a few different kinds of doctors. Many of you probably already know that there is more than one kind of doctor. But you might be surprised by just how many there are. In total, There are over 60 different types of doctors, and each type specializes in a few things. Let's look at a few of those types now. The most common type of doctor is a general practitioner. General practitioners are family doctors. 
They are the first doctor a patient sees, and they treat general sicknesses. Another type of doctor is a cardiologist. Cardiologists are heart doctors. They treat heart disease and people who have had heart attacks. A third type of doctor is a neurologist. Neurologists treat problems of the nervous system. That includes any problem with the brain, spinal cord, nerves, or muscles. The final type of doctor I will talk about today is an obstetrician. They are pregnancy doctors. They treat women who are pregnant. Listen and practice. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of nutrition at home. Every one of you is probably wondering what foods you should be eating. Nutrition for growing children is very important. Kids need foods which are rich in vitamins A, B, C, D, E, and K. Fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, lean meats, whole wheat breads, and fish are all great sources of vitamins. My advice to you: look at the label on your food before you buy it. Read what daily percentage of vitamins each food has. Make sure that at the end of the day you have had 100% of all your daily vitamin requirements. If you do that, you will grow up strong and healthy. Listen and practice. One holiday, when my aunt came to visit, she brought a special gift for my grandparents. Can you guess what it was? She had purchased a box of special birds' eggs. It contained pigeon, peacock, turkey, and chicken eggs. Why did she choose this gift? My grandma and grandpa are getting old, but they love animals, so my aunt wanted them to have some special birds. She spent a lot of time finding these special eggs. Some of these birds lay only a few eggs each month. She had to order them long before her visit. After my aunt brought the eggs to my grandparents, they used a big oven to hatch them. Before the holiday was over, these special eggs became special birds: pigeons, peacocks, turkeys, and chickens. Each of them was unique. They were very special gifts. Listen and practice. Hello, students. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. McKenzie. I am the school's principal. Thank you for coming. I want to talk to you today about an increasing problem at our school: peer pressure. For those of you who don't know, peer pressure is when your friends or classmates Pressure you to do something that is bad. Unfortunately, friends and classmates often pressure each other to do things like skip class, cheat on tests, or be mean to other students. I know that it can be very tempting to do something just because other people are doing it, but it is important to learn how to say no. You don't want to get caught doing something you aren't supposed to do. It will cause you a lot of problems. Trust me. Also, if any of you are ever having trouble and need help, or you just need to talk to someone, 
please visit me in my office. My door is always open to students in need. Listen and practice. Hello, class. My name is Jimmy. Today, I am going to give a presentation on my role model, my dad. I have admired my dad ever since I was young. He is the smartest man in the world. Every time I have problems with my homework, he teaches me how to solve them. My dad is good at sports too. He can play baseball, soccer, and golf. He was the hero of his team. When I get older, I want to be just like my dad. It is my lifelong dream. Listen and practice. Good evening, everyone. The topic of today's seminar is the dangers of having too much stress. We all know that having some stress is good. It helps us keep busy, motivated, and excited. And if you don't have enough stress, you will become lazy and depressed. The problem, of course, is when we have too much stress. Too much stress is bad. It makes us feel tired, angry, and can even make us sick. The key to having a happy life is to find the right balance of stress in your life. This can be done by remembering three easy-to-follow rules. One, remember to keep your goals realistic. Two, have a good balance between work and play. And three, have friends and family who can help you when things become difficult. If you follow those three rules. Your life will be a lot happier. I guarantee it. Listen and practice. I am glad you are here. You obviously all want to become better students. That is a very important first step. Now I would like to start by asking everyone a very important question: Do you know what kind of learner you are? There are three different types: visual, auditory, and interactive learners. The first type we are going to talk about is visual. Visual learners learn best when information is written in diagrams or in picture form. Next, let's look at auditory learners. Auditory learners learn best when they listen to information in lectures, tapes, or discussions. Finally, we have interactive learners. Interactive learners learn best by actively doing something, like building a science experiment or participating in a group discussion. You will take a short test to find out what kind of learner you are. Listen and practice. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first day of business class. Today, we will talk about how to run a successful business. If you are going to start a business, you need to remember five very important rules. They are the most important rules in business. The first rule is your product or service. Needs to be unique. If there are a lot of competitors that have the same product, nobody will want to buy yours. Second, you need to have a good team of workers. If you work with smart people and share ideas, you are more likely to be successful. Third, your business needs to be cost efficient. You need to minimize overhead. And maximize profits. Fourth, you need to be organized and have a strong business plan. If you don't have a plan for your business, you will surely fail.
Finally, and most importantly, you need to satisfy your customers. Because remember, without customers, you don't have a business. Listen and practice. My name is Douglas Fontaine, and I am a successful business owner and entrepreneur. I started my first business when I was 14 years old. My mother is from Korea, and my dad is from here in the U.S. One time, I was visiting my cousins in Seoul and had an idea. There was a store in my cousin's neighborhood that sold really cool toys. I knew that many kids back in the U.S. would want to buy them. So I bought 30 of the toys and brought them back to the U.S. The toys were very popular, and I sold all of them in one week. I had an idea. I asked my cousins to buy 100 toys and send them in the mail. I sold them all in a few months. It was then I realized that I could make a lot of money buying things from one country and selling them in another. When I got older, I remembered that experience and set up a business between Korea and America. My company is called Korean American Import and Export. It has been a great success and a wonderful opportunity to do business with the two countries that I love. Listen and practice. Have you ever heard of Oprah Winfrey? She is one of the most successful and famous women celebrities of all time. Her story is an inspiration to us all. Today, she is worth billions of dollars, but Oprah certainly did not start out that way. Oprah started at the bottom, and she worked her way up to the top. She was born in 1954 in Mississippi to a poor family. She had a lot of problems growing up, including abuse at home. That didn't stop Oprah from becoming successful, though. She worked hard and got a job at a radio station when she was still in high school. People quickly noticed Oprah's ability to communicate and offered her a job as a news anchor. In just a few years, she was co-hosting a talk show. Then in 1986, she started her own TV talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show. Her show is still on today, and it has become one of the most famous shows in television history. Listen and practice. Hey guys, my name is Danny, and I want to talk to you about bike safety. For years, my mother always told me to wear a helmet when I ride my bike, and for years, I never listened. That moment changed on July 22nd last year. It was 9 a.m., and I left my house to go to school on my bike. As usual, I did not wear a helmet. But when I was five minutes away from my house, I had a strange feeling that I should turn around and put on my helmet. So I did. I went home, put on my helmet, and continued to school. About ten minutes later, I was crossing the road on my bike and was hit by a speeding motorcycle. I flew into the air and landed hard on my back and head. It hurt, but I was not seriously injured. At the hospital, the doctor said if I hadn't been wearing a helmet, it could have been fatal. It was one very lucky day. Ever since that day, I always wear my helmet. I suggest all of you do too.